Hey guys, welcome to the Rusty Beauties shop. Today we're going to be working again on the 66 GT6 behind me. And in the last episode we did some uh, repairs on the floor. I mean, it was inside the floor actually. Inside here, we finished repairing these cross members here and there. And then we came out and we fixed a little bit this flange here because it was a little bit too short here. We trimmed a little bit, ground down the plug welds, fixed these plug welds here and ground them down. And last but not least, we welded this flange, which I forgot to clean the paint from inside. And that was a problem because I couldn't use my spot welder. So that's why I had to drill holes and make plug welds, which worked well. And then I fixed this seam a little bit. So. That's what we've done on the last episode. And then my plan was to flip the car the other way around and do the same job on that flange and on that wheel well. But that's not gonna be very interesting for you to watch. So I'm gonna leave it for some other time when I'm here in the garage on my own. But now since you're here, I need to do something more interesting for you. <laughs> so we're gonna come here and we're gonna start dealing with this top of the rear valance which doesn't seem bad when you look from this side only here you can see a hole in here but actually there's a hole here but it's very pitted here and that's gonna go through really soon so we don't wanna risk it so that's what we're gonna do today and um, I have an idea here which I'm gonna share with you in a second All right, sorry about the noise in the previous clip. I forgot to turn off the heater. I had the heater on and it's noisy because it's nine degrees Celsius in the garage, it's cold. Anyway, so my idea for this panel is the following. First, let me explain how, how things were put together here by the factory. So this rear valance is the same rear valance that they used on the Spitfire and then they turned this Spitfire body into a GT6 by adding this panel here. But they kept this valance here and it has even a lip going up, just like for the Spitfire. You can see here inside. So this lip is where the, where the boot lid seal would normally go on the Spitfire. So this panel is like this and it goes out and it is the same here and it goes down. So if we remove this panel from the top, that would be the same profile there and everything as Spitfire. So for them, it was easier to do it this way. They just added this panel, which has also a flange going in and this flange goes on top of this. And these two, I guess, are spot welded here or something. So, that I don't think is needed because that creates troubles. You see, even here inside, it's rotten big time. So water goes in from here between the two panels and it gets stuck in this literally like a bucket here. It fills up with water and that's why it is rotten here. So you see where I'm going? I'm thinking I should delete this seam at all. So what I think I should do is make a cut somewhere here, maybe an inch above, and another cut here somewhere, not all the way to the edge, but somewhere here. I will see how it's gonna work all the way up there. And make a like an angle piece and replace this and delete this. I don't think this is needed. I know that's not how originally the car is built but i think it was built this way to save money and uh, not for any structural reasons because on the spitfire this panel doesn't even exist and it's still going to be structural because this angle here is going to be the same so that's my idea so i think i should make again like we did here on the bottom of the valance we're going to make two halves we're going to make one panel from here up and one from here down 
and we're gonna replace them separately. We're gonna make the replacement piece first. We're gonna try to make it uh, match perfectly, the curves and everything. And then we're gonna put it there and we're gonna mark both sides and we're gonna cut it and we're gonna replace it. And then this inside here is gonna disappear, which might be a problem now when I think about it because this holds something here. Ah, okay, let me think about it. I figured it out. Okay, so obviously these here are holding the shelf in place and if we delete this thing, we're not gonna have any support for the shelf, but I still think it's a good idea to delete it. So my idea is when everything is done, the repair, then we can make a bar that goes from here to here that might even screw here and here, or we're gonna weld it or we'll see how it's gonna work and that bar is gonna hold these again the same way as it holds them now they are not very solid anyways you see how flexible everything is so we might find some better way for these to be supported so a bar from here to here and then another one from here to there just like this one you see here there is a factory bar like that so we're gonna do something like this here and that's how it's gonna work so Let's go ahead and start making the panel for here. Actually, before we start making it, we need to fix this corner here because it's a little bit dented. And actually there's another one right in the same place. I think this is where the bumper was held and the bumper got pushed in for some reason. So we're gonna have to fix that before we are able to make our panel. So let's try and do that. All right, so I'm going to put this dolly underneath with this end because I think that's the only way or maybe this way I'm going to put it inside and we're going to try with the slapper to bring this out. If not, we're going to have to use uh, the stinger and weld some pins here that we can pull with a slide hammer. But let me try this way first. That's not going to work. Okay, I will try first with this uh, Pro Spot dent puller that I have. And uh, if you follow me long enough, you know that I had troubles with this machine. Actually, it is a beautiful machine, but I ruined it by plugging it into uh, 240 volts instead of 110. And that ruined it. So a friend of mine took it to a repair and they did something, but unfortunately never came back working normally but still I'm gonna try and if it doesn't work then we're gonna pull out our stinger so what it does is it welds itself to the metal and then with the slide hammer you pull it out but here actually first I'm gonna turn this because this tip is very worn okay let's see Yeah, it doesn't work. Yeah, it's supposed to weld itself there. Nope. No. Forget about it. Let's not waste our time. All right, so this is the stinger. I don't know, you might have a different name for it. Here on the label it says Magna Spot. So whatever you want to call it, that's the tool that I'm talking about. And let's see if we can weld a few studs here. Like that. Now with this sliding hammer, we should be able to pull the dent out. Just here, we need to hammer this down a little. Okay, so here it would be great if I had a T-handle to pull, 
But I don't, so I'm gonna pull it manually. This is my left hand that I'm hammering with. <laughs> it's like not great, but. Huh. It worked pretty well. I'm actually happy with it. So here the curve goes like this down, but from here it goes out a little bit to this corner. So that's gonna be tricky. All right, so I cleaned it up here a little bit so we don't have any paint or anything that's gonna affect our shape. And I cut this piece and I bent it to pretty much the same profile here, I think. And maybe I need to bend it a little bit more. Here it's okay, but here it needs to be bent more. Looks like this angle is not the same everywhere. But for now, we're gonna start giving it this shape and as you can see now here it drops in this area but here i have a gap here so first we're gonna start because we're gonna start bending it from here down first i'm gonna uh, make this curve here that is a little bit open this way well i'm sorry guys it looks like i was talking to myself for the last 10 minutes <sighs> I didn't press the record button, so sorry. So what I did was I dragged the, the shrinker stretcher here and I started shrinking this flange here to create this curve here that matches this curve. And, and then from there, I started stretching this flange a little bit at a time to match this curve, but I didn't film it, I'm sorry. <laughs> I even explained here about my shrinker stretcher and my English wheel and my brake and all the equipment that I have. There are many people who suggested to mount them to the floor so they don't shake like that and uh, they're more stable. But this is one of the reasons why I don't want to do that because I can easily drag the piece of equipment next to the job, do whatever I need to do and then put it somewhere where it's out of my way. If it's mounted somewhere, I need to go back and forth all the time and I don't like that. The other reason is because the garage is not mine, I'm renting it so I don't want to drill holes and put anchors and stuff like that. So yeah, that's how I prefer it. Anyway, so now it looks like this angle of this piece is good for here only. Here we need to open it like this, so this arm goes and hits there and there it looks like we need to close it a little bit so that's what we're gonna do on the vise now i'm gonna do it with a rubber mallet so it doesn't make dents okay let's try it now that's actually more complicated than what i expected to be honest but we're gonna figure it out. Hmm. Looks like the middle raised. You see, because if you look at it this way, you see it became a bow. So now we're gonna shrink here too, in this area. That looks better. Broken again, so stretch here. <laughs> it's gonna require some fiddling, you know. That was too much. Here, this needs a little bit more to go in, so we're gonna shrink here more. Mm, and stretch here. Oh. 
All right, so after a whole bunch of shrinking here, stretching there, I played a lot with it, but I believe now that we have it pretty close to what it's supposed to be. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna shorten this plunge to match this one. So I'm gonna just mark the back. This. So that shows me where the end is, but even here we need to shorten it. So anyways, first let's shorten it from here to up there to be the same distance from the edge as here. And then we're gonna shorten another, I don't know, eight or three sixteenths maybe. We will see. So now we have to cut it to this line. So I trimmed it everywhere, so now it is pretty much in line with the edge. Maybe it's a little bit further in from the edge of the valance here. And then I marked in the back here this line, probably another eight or something away from the edge of this. So now I'm gonna grind it just to the marker and then we will see how far it is from the corner and if it is a good position to cut this, we're gonna mark it. We're gonna mark also the other side and we're gonna cut the whole thing out. Actually, we're gonna cut it here as well, like this, because we have this uh, plate here for the tail light. It's coming something like this in the back. So yeah. And I'm gonna grind a little bit more here. Looks like I didn't press the record button. <laughs> so I don't know what I recorded, what I didn't, but I did it right here. I marked it. And because when we remove the old metal, this is gonna go a little bit further in and down because of the thickness of the metal, of course. So I cut a little bit further in from my line and I'm gonna do the same here. If we have to shave a little bit more from any of the pieces, we can, of course, but I don't want to cut too much. I, I'd rather cut less and then grind it out to the proper shape than cut too much. All right, so the, ex the external cutting is done, easy no problem inside is what's the what the problem is so here i made a cut a little bit further than my mark but that cut ends up right where this bracket is so i made another cut a little bit higher and that's where i'm gonna use my sozo to make a cut through this then here we're gonna see i haven't decided yet what i'm gonna do here but up there I cut this and we need to make a cut right there as well which I'm gonna do through outside with the sozo so actually from the vibrations I was able to snap the Spot welds there, which is even better. Actually, here where I was worried more in this end, looks like it, is, it fits better. Here we need to grind a little bit more. Here you see it's matching pretty well. All the way to somewhere here. And here they're overlapping. So here we're gonna grind a little bit more our new piece and it's gonna fit perfectly. Here, this gap is a little bit bigger than what I intended. But other than that, here, 
it is pretty good. And let's see what it looks like inside. It's so much better without that shelf, but I think we're gonna have to add it back. This shelf or another piece, because this needs support now again, but this gives us exactly the distance where this was. Then we have this piece here that gives us the exact distance where the shelf was. And we're gonna do the same here later, but that's super useless here, this shelf. It is like creating more troubles than helping. All right, so I trimmed it a little bit. Actually, I made it shorter because before it was a little bit too long and it was overlapping with this piece. And now that I trimmed it shorter, I didn't need to trim almost anything here, just a little bit. And now it matches perfectly here. Even this gap became a little bit smaller here and it's perfect all over the place. So now we're gonna use our new technique that we learned of welding which is, don't tell anyone, super secret. Just weld it slow and wait for it to cool down. <laughs> really, like I said before, when we were making this, when we were doing this repair, I always knew that we need to do it slow and wait for it to cool down. I just didn't know how slow is slow. Well, it's really slow. So what I'm gonna do, if you haven't seen that video, what my technique is, I do only one tack at a time anywhere. I'm, I'm not gonna do more than one tack at a time. Just one here, one here, one here, one here, one here, and then stop and wait. And of course, in the meantime, I can start doing the other patch for there. And now it's cold in the garage anyway, so it's gonna be cooling down pretty fast. So three, four minutes work on that, and then come and do another series of one tack, individual, here and there, and just like that. Here in the corner, I made a accidental cut here, but we're gonna fill it up and we're gonna fill all this here and we're gonna grind it nicely. And it's gonna look like, well, it's not gonna look like original because the original looks like that and we don't like it, right? We like it like this. So let's get cracker locking. All right, so I tucked it in place and I made sure that everywhere, absolutely everywhere, it lines up perfectly because we don't want it to be misaligned because then it doesn't matter how much you grind, you can't make it nice. So it is tucked everywhere. Of course, I didn't do the tucks one next to each other. I did one here, one here, one here, then came back here and etc. So it's still in a good shape. It's not warped. And now we're going to let it cool down because as gen in general, the whole area is now warm. So I'm going to let it cool down to a point where it, is, it feels like here. And then I'm going to do another series of tacks like So now in the meantime, I'm going to start making the other piece, which you already saw me making here. So I'm just going to do it on my own and um, I'm gonna show you some progress at some point. All right, um, we're making progress here with the welding. It's still not done. There's still little gaps that I still need to fill, but like I said, I'm going slow. I cut the piece for down there, but before I start bending it, I need to come and deal with this dent again. And and this one is worse than the other side. So let's see if I'm gonna be able to fix it. It's in a little bit awkward position here, but I'm gonna try to hammer it from inside out. I think I have room here. Like it is right here. So I might be able to, I might remove this bracket and hammer it from inside out. You see who's keeping me company in the garage? Yeah, I'm uh, done here with all this welding. It is now complete. So 
what's left is to be ground. And in the meantime, I also made this piece that also matches nicely here. So when we put it like this to match here, it matches everywhere, just like the other one. I was also able to fix this dent here. Actually turned out pretty good. Uh, there was also a distorted area here for whatever reason, like this was pushed in. So I managed to straighten it a little bit. It's not perfect yet, but I still have this inside that is in my way. So once I take this out and we weld the new piece here, I'm gonna get back to this and we're gonna flatten it because it's still distorted. It was much worse. Anyways, but uh, it's gonna be hard to work like this because it's too low to the ground. That was pretty convenient, the height of this thing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grind this now and uh, I'll feel whatever pinholes are left because I'm sure there are some. And once we complete this half, we're gonna flip the car on the other side and uh, we're gonna put this on top and then we're gonna cut it and weld it the same way. All right, so I ground it. I haven't filled the pinholes yet. Of course, like I said, there's gonna be pinholes here and there, but uh, I'm pretty happy with what it is. I need to fill up here in the corner a little bit. I welded a little cut and of course there's a pinhole. So we're gonna weld that as well. We're gonna fill this up, but I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Here, um, you can still see the seam, but yeah, it's gonna need some more grinding, but it's dinner time, so I've been called for dinner, so I'm not gonna finish it today, but I just wanted to show you that actually it is better than what I expected. It didn't warp, it is pretty good. Um, maybe there's a little low area right here, but here it's so easy now. I can put a dolly inside and with the slopper, I can uh, punish it a little bit. Yeah, here it seems to be high or maybe that's the paint, I don't know. I have to remove the paint. Anyways, uh, just wanted to give you an update and now I'm gonna go for dinner and probably I'm not gonna come after dinner again. I'm gonna come back in the garage again tomorrow. So see you tomorrow. All right, so it's the next day and I already filled some uh, pinholes here. I filled this as well and uh, that's it for this side. I think now we can put the wing back and then flip the car on its other side. I guess we're gonna go through the roof just so everything that's inside falls down because there's a lot of stuff that is down there and some other places. So hopefully everything is gonna come down and we're gonna vacuum it. Uh, I already recovered my dolly from here. <laughs> it was inside the B post, but now when it was tipped this way, it came out and I was able to reach and grab it. So I have my dolly back. <laughs> the car ate it months ago. All right, so we have it flipped on its other side and here the situation is pretty much the same. Well, actually not really, because here turns out that I've done all the work on this flange, so it is complete. I've also done this here. I remember to clean the paint from inside, so I, I've done spot welds. This here is um, actually in a better shape. It doesn't look great because of how hard it was to weld, but at least it is um, straight, so that's fine. But we also have here, here these holes are like on the other side. I wasn't able to do them properly, so now we're gonna fill all these holes. But we also have a problem here on the WeWart or on this flange because uh, we didn't replace this. Remember on the other side, we replaced the whole WeWart. Here it looked better and we only replaced this little strip here. So now we're gonna have to deal with this issue here and this issue here, which is not too hard. And uh, 
here also. I forgot about that. I made this patch before, but I didn't realize that the metal above it was also pretty thin. So now we're gonna fix this as well. And then of course, we're gonna have to do this repair, which I think I'm gonna do first. I already have momentum from there, right? All right, so the other half is cut now and the piece fits nicely. And we're gonna start welding it. Here inside, we have this bracket that I believe holds the gas tank. So it is still attached to this piece that we cut off. So we need to remove it from here and we're gonna attach it here where it was before. And yeah, making progress. All right, so it's tucked in place carefully, made sure that it is lined up everywhere. So the only issue we have is here where the rust was spread a little bit farther than everywhere else. So here we're gonna put a brass piece inside and we're gonna fill that. But everywhere else, I believe we are good. So as long as we weld it slow, as we already learned, it should be fine. As usual, I'm gonna make a series of tacks here and then I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna start working on this and this and then I'm gonna go back there and then here and back there. <laughs> and that's how it's gonna work for a while. All right, so this is now completely welded everywhere. And again, you can see from the heat pattern that we managed to keep the heat very low and it didn't warp at all. That's nice. And in the meantime, I was able to uh, cut off the rust from here and repair it. And the only thing that's left is here. I haven't done that yet. And I also uh, filled these plug welds here. So what's left now is grinding. And of course, I need to address that too. All right. So this is ground. The QC is here to inspect it. Is it okay? Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah, he says yes. All right, so let's see the other QC, my audience. Let's see what you're gonna say. I think it looks good. The seam is almost invisible. Didn't warp again. So I think we'll learn the technique, which <laughs> I'm gonna say it again. Nothing complicated about this technique. Just weld slow. <laughs> Perfect alignment while tacking and then weld slow. So bottom is done. Top is done of the rear valance. Here, this is the, this is done. This is done here. So this is actually the last patch that we need to do. And I see here that there's, it's a mess. I think we're gonna have to go all the way to here somewhere, but that's gonna be a uh, subject of another video because I think we're gonna end this one here. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna put the wing back on and I'm gonna drop it down so we can see this repair better. And I can take actually a shot for my thumbnail because I can take a shot like that. Eh, I can actually take a shot like that. I'm sorry guys, yeah. That's how we're gonna leave it because I still need to work in that wheel well, so there's no point of dropping it down. So, I don't know how dirty my face is. I think it's very dirty because I had to go inside the boots and get rid of the seam sealer and everything inside so I can weld properly. So I think my face is really dirty but anyway so that's gonna be it for t for this video we are really really close to end of welding i appreciate you s sticking around in the garage with me keeping me company while i'm doing all this grinding and welding so thanks for watching for commenting for subscribing for sharing for supporting the channel and for everything that you do for me guys thank you i'll see you in the next one bye